Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on Metronic. In this video, we will discuss on Metronic's GOP installation for version 6.0.8 and above. So let's get started. First thing you need to do is purchase and download Metronic, and you can do that by going to teamforest.net and then go to HTML and you find Metronic right here. And once you've on Metronic, you can live preview it or just purchase it. And when you've purchased Metronic, you will look something like this. You'll be downloading the uh, Metronic zip file. And once you unzip it, you'll be welcomed with three folders. Design, Doc, and Theme. In Design, you have the PSD and Sketch files where you can just look at, find our designs in Photoshop and Sketch, our official documentation folder, and our theme which has Angular, Classic and Default versions. Uh, the Angular is quite uh, self-explanatory, it's basically is, is Metronic using the Angular framework, and then Classic and Default which are similar but for Classic you do not have any build tools and in the default package you will have build tools built into it. We currently have two build tools which is Gulp and Webpack. But for this video, we'll be talking on Webpack. Uh, sorry, uh, we'll be talking on Gulp installation. So before we head further, let's look into our docs and open our documentation, which is the docs.html. Once you once you open it, uh, the docs.html, you'll be greeted with the quick start, which is a very simple nine steps of um, uh, how to basically kickstart or start up uh, Metronic using um, Gulp. And in here, we also have another section here called Build Tools. And uh, if you look at Gulp, you see more info on Gulp. We will get to that shortly. So first, uh, what we need to do is we need to purchase, uh, download the latest theme source from um, the marketplace, which will be Team Forest. And if you haven't already downloaded and installed Node.js, Node.js you will have a Windows and Mac installer, so just pick one installer that suits your machine and go from there. Once you've done installing um, uh, Node.js, we can then move on to uh, installing uh, npm, yarn, and gulp. Now, let's look at our theme and default and once you go to the default package you'll be seeing 12 different demos for now we'll be adding new demos in the future but we have 12 for now and each demo is basically an individual project by itself therefore if you need like um if you need to use demo one or demo two or some certain demos for your projects you do not need to uh, refer to any other folders you just have to go into a specific demo folder and everything be in there so in order to like to select your demo you can just go into our main website which is keenteams.com slash metronic or you could just go to our official documentation here and go to index and you see the latest uh, versions of all our uh, metronics demos so here you have demo 1, 2, 3, all the way to uh, demo 12, and 13 and 14 is coming soon. So once you've selected one, uh, one demo that you want, you can just uh, drill into the, the demo folder that you want, and you'll find the source and tools. Um, so if you look at our quick start documentation, uh, we will need to navigate to the tools folder within the specific demo that you want to use. So in this example, we will go with demo 1. So once you're in demo 1, go to the tools folder and then we need to basically type in cmd to open up the command prompt with the path. If you're using Max, you just open up your terminal and then navigate to this path. And what we need to do now is we need to install npm. Here, we need to install yarn. And we need to install Gulp. However, if you already have 
uh, npm yarn and gub installed on your machine, you don't really need to do this. But it's always good to um, keep your versions up to date. So to do that, you can actually run npm uh, dash dash version or yarn uh, dash dash version. Similar with gulp, you can check the version to see if uh, you are up to date. If you're upgrading uh, Medtronic from an older version, we also highly recommend you to run yarn upgrade to make sure that your yarn um, updates all your all your third-party dependencies and and just keep everything just um, stable. Okay, since um, I've already have npm yarn and gulp installed my machine. I'm not. Go I'm going to skip those steps. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run yarn to basically install all our third-party dependencies. Okay, our yarn is done. So next thing we need to do is we need to run gulp build. What this does, it will just build the demo, uh, the demo of the folder that we are in. So in this example, we will be um, installing demo one's demo files. So if you go to demo one and keep this folder open and we run gulp build, you see the this folder appear in this folder. Okay, we've done building our demo. As you can see, the this folder appears and if you go into it, you see all of Medtronic's demos files. We have the assets here. All the CSS, JS, and media plugins, they're all here. And in the uh, other folders, we have our components, HTML files, our CRUD, our custom files. Everything will be um, neatly organized and arranged it's in, in its own specific folder. So in order to preview this, you can just double click on the index.html to open up uh, in our browser. And that's pretty much it. You have Metronic Demo 1 working on your computer. So all you have to do here is just to um, see any, ele any elements that you would like to have in your project and then locate the file and then put it into your project. Now, this is an example of how you can use Demo 1 for your project. But let's say if you want to have a like you want to use demo tree, for example, for your project. To do that is basically do the exact same steps. You go to demo tree, you go to tools, you find the exact same gulp, uh, gulp files and everything like that. You type in CMD, you run yarn to install the dependencies. And once yarn is done, you run um, gulp build to build the demo um, file uh, or the demo folders. And that's pretty much it. Um, you will have Medtronic working, um, Medtronic demo files working on your machine uh, uh, right off the bat. However, this is not the end of this video. We have, uh, with Gulp installation, we have a lot of configurations or customizations that you can actually use to make Medtronic even better for your project. If you go back to our um, documentation, you go to our build tools and go to gulp and in here you see a build config and each demo uh, within Medtronic will have its own individual gulp config file so let's have a look in our IDE here let's go to default and we go to demo 1, we go to tools and if you go to gulp.config.json you'll see Medtronic's um, uh, config file, gulp config file for demo 1. Similarly, if you go to like another, another demo, for example, let's look at demo 7, there's also a tools folder and also another gulp config.json. In here, you might see that it's similar, like the, the configurations here is all similar, but there may be some minor differences between each demo. For example, um, of course, the plugins may be similar, like um, each demo will have similar plugins that be that will be used, but the the styles, the JS uh, layout, um, the JS files for each demo will be slightly different. 
because the source for each demo will come from its own demo folder. So for example, source for the SAS files here in demo 7, like this target SAS, and in demo 1, go to assets and go to SAS and go to start of SAS. So as you can see, it's similar, but with the moment we see the content within like in the config or in the layout or even the number of includes, like demo one will have uh, a different number of includes and demo seven will have also a different number of includes. So each demo is independent from one another. So once you have decided like which demo you like to use as your base, as your core, uh, layout then you can just pick the demo and work with that specific demo itself you do not need to worry about any other demos and they are all independent from one another but let's just go through how do we read uh, the gub config file so in gub config file we have uh, our, our basic descriptive uh, descriptions here um, we have our the name, the description, the version, and we have a config um, node and a build node. In the config node, we have uh, a few fields here, which is the demo, which is uh, we can leave it as blank because it just sets which demo you want to build. Um, the work basically is for you to um, toggle true or false. If the work is toggled as true. Uh, when you run gulp build, like what we did earlier, like uh, like here, when you run when we ran gulp build, you basically get more descriptive um, text or descriptions of what's happening in the background. And then we have a compile, like this entire thing here, it's just to 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 um, indicate what we're compiling. Um, as you can see, RTL here is set to true by default. So what this means is every time you run gulp build, it will build an RTL version of um, that demo. So what do we mean here is if whenever we, we run gulp build, it will create a destination folder with all the assets and HTML files in it. So in that destination uh, folder, you have an assets and if you look at CSS you see a style bundle.css a regular one and an RTL one the reason why we have an RTL, RTL one is because we enabled this if you disable this to if you toggle this to false then basically when we run got built this folder will not be here next will be um, all these different um, plugins that we are skipping for the RTL build the reason why we're skipping it is because all these plugins don't really need an RTL version. For example, if you look at Font Awesome, for fl uh, Flat Icons, those are just icon plugins. They don't really need to have an RTL version because it doesn't really matter if it's left to right or right to left. And also we have some Uglyfy, Minify and some JS and CSS source maps that you can toggle. If you need it, you can just turn it on. If not, you can just leave it as it is. Next comes our path. This is basically how Metronics, uh, Metronic knows where the source is coming from. So this is the source assets, which is basically this folder here. Everything in here will be um, used as the source. So like the JS will be compiled and uh, bundled up and deployed to destination. But the source will be here. The media files will be here. Source or the source files will be here. So it's just a, it's just to define where the source path is and the node modules is again um, just to, to define where the node modules is located which is right here the demo api url is mainly for um, the, for uh, metronics demos and um, some of metronics demo pages will require some server-side callback which will need this url to make the call so some some pages such as our data table may need some server-side uh, uh, communication. So yeah, this is this is basically what it does. Um, next will be our disk, which is basically our destination path. Now at the moment, it's set to uh, it's set to deploy the destination to within the demo. 
demo folder back here in this uh, basically compile and deploy it to within demo folder itself so if for example we were compiling demo tree right so if you do gop build on demo tree if you look into demo tree you see a this folder appear here as well so this is the default destination um, location or path of where we're going to put all of uh, the demos assets which is the CSS, JS, media files and all of the demos HTML files as you can see the, this, the destination folder was created and it's, okay, it's not really done yet but in here we have all of the assets HTML and whatnot but when you're building your project you can actually change this path to your project folder so whenever you run gulp build instead of deploying all the assets into the default location within the demo you can actually deploy all the assets into your project folder so to do that you can actually just type in like c drive and then say folder or say my project say my project folder slash like yes, somewhere well, like this this will do and then it will just deploy it to that this this location and that's pretty much how this works so you you can pretty much do anything you want with this you can deploy it anywhere you want in the computer and it will just place the assets for assets files all in there Moving on to our build, we have a few uh, special things here, or special notes here. We have um, plugins, media, uh, theme, and media. So media basically just grabs everything from the media source folder, which is this one right here, which is this one right here. Yep. All the images from here to be deployed into the destination path right here. You go to assets, and you see all the media files here. So this will be defining where the source is and where it's going to be output to. So that's just this media. Let's move on to theme. Theme, we have a few things here. Uh, the theme is basically um, defining the styles or the JS configurations and um, certain schemes for the demo. And each of these is different from one demo to another. Although the file names are the same, but the configurations within the files are different, as mentioned earlier. So for demo one, for example, since we are in oh sorry, this demo three. So for demo three, we'll take the styles, we we'll take all the components and the layout JS files. And what we're doing here is we are bundling them up into individual files so that um, your page will be better optimized. So what it does here is the styles we have style.sus and we bundle up into style.bundle.css and then we have two JS files here actually not really two JS files it's quite a fair bit of JS files because we're getting all JS files from this folder and all JS files from this folder bundling all of them up into a single JS file called scripts.bundle.js within the destination which is right here so if you go to destination, you go to JS or assets at JS, and you find it here. And then CSS here. So just to understand the concept of the um, GOP config format, we have the source and we have the bundle. These are the two main things that we are, we are going to look at. In the source, we have a few types of sources which is style sources and script sources and there will be some cases where we have media and in media we have a few types of media we can have images or we can have fonts so in skins um, it's basically just defining different skin types uh, skin types for uh, Metronic so skin types are basically if you look at our demo the dashboard Go to skins and then we see two types of skins. We have a light 
basically it's the same layout as demo one just that the color scheme changes if dark again same layout color scheme changes so these are basically how skins work in Metronic the layout is pretty much the same just that theme colors change and if you go back to our code and this is what the uh, skin does and then we come back to our last layout or our last uh, theme stylings or theme configuration which is our pages so if you go to our sus pages you go to sus pages and we see a bunch of pages here or rather page types so for example if you go to wizard we have four types of uh, wizard files or wizard pages so if you go to pages wizard and we can see four wizard pages here so you go to wizard one it's wizard one and if you go to our code wizard one sus is here and we have certain scripts as well for specific pages so if we go to just this, we go to SSGS, we go to pages, and we see some folders here, which is some of these components, some CRUD, and some custom pages. If we go to wizards, we have again one to four. What we does here is once it's um, deployed, compiled, and deployed, it just goes to the destination location, which is the, for example, CSS, we go to pages. The wizards you see uh, CSS 1 to 4 with the RTL version because we configured it to have uh, we enabled RTL. So essentially, this is how we read gob.config.json file. Now, once we have the idea of how the format works, like we have source, we have bundle, and in source, we have different sources, we have style and script sources. So if we go to plugins, we see a few things. We have base and custom. We get into what this two really means shortly. But in base, we have a like mandatory and optional. Plugins are basically all of Metronic's third party, well, plugins that Metronic uses for a variety, a variety of things. Uh, mandatory plugins are basically plugins that Metronic absolutely needs. If Metronic has one of these plugins missing, it uh, Metronic might not work as um, as it should. But Metronic also what, what we did is we also sort of give you an option where you can actually remove certain plugins that you may not need in the in the event that your project does not need it. So in the option optional um, options here, like for example, if you scroll down maybe if your project does not need a bootstrap time Keeper or time picker, you can actually just remove it. And once you remove it, if you remember what we mentioned by having the source and the bundle, so let's minimize this because it's way too large. Bundle, so what this means is once you remove a certain plugin, it will not be bundled up within the plugins bundle, which in uh, in turn makes your bundle file a lot smaller. So it, it depends on your project. If your project does not re, uh, need the tech time picker, for example, like the one we just removed, you can just go ahead and remove it. However, if you do want to have uh, add your own plugin into Metronic, it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is just put a comma at the very end and then type in your plugin. Like say this is your plugin. And then you define the sources, which is either styles or scripts. For example, like this, a jQuery repeater just has scripts, it doesn't have styles, a sweet alert has styles and scripts. And you and these sources are basically kept in an array, so you can just keep adding them as, as much as you want. You can have like three, for example, or just one or two. It, it depends on the plugin. Also, if you notice that there are plugins that are kept or stored within uh, repos, like uh, npm or yarn where you can just do an npm install or yarn add and when you do that it gets stored into the node modules folder since we define the path of node modules like at the top here we can do a simple shortcut to say grab the uh, node module path and then 
the JS files and CSS files that's your um, newly plugin, but a uh, newly installed plugin. So for example, so for example here, see, uh, this is my plugin here. You can put like styles. And then we could put a you no, know, like say, say you install it via npm. You can just do it like this, and then slash say your plugin. Since it's a style, we can call it like plugin CSS. And then if you have a script, and then you do this slash your plugin. Plugin.js. If you have more, you can just put a comma and then and you can just keep going as you want. So now, now that you understand how this works, um, if you look at our This. If you look at our format again, everything in our source we bundled up into a single file. So what this means is all of the styles within like mandatory and optional. So all the styles will be let's see mandatory doesn't have much styles in it, so it's optional. Like all these styles, this and this and like all this will be bundled up into a single file called plugin start bundle. And all the JS files or the scripts will be uh, bundled up into plugins. Uh, Bundle.js. Now, this is basically a global plugin bundle, meaning that all, all these plugins will be loaded globally on every page within Medtronic or within Medtronic's demo that you selected. So, if you put your plugin within the optional, or if you can put it even, you can put it in mandatory, you can do that. Just like adding it here, like just putting a plugin here and whatnot. You can do that. But adding plugins within this section basically means you are adding a plugin globally throughout your entire project. But if you do not want to do that, uh, the reason why you may not want to do that is perhaps the plugin that you're using will only be used at maybe one or two pages from the entire project and you don't really want to bloat your global. Um, plugin bundle. So to do that, you this is where custom plugins come in. Custom plugins basically defines the main, uh, the, the plugin that you want, and then uh, bundling it within its own bundle. So if you look at jQuery UI here, we have the source, which defines the styles, scripts, and even images that comes with jQuery UI, and then bundles it up into its own CSS bundle, its own JS bundle, and its own images folder. If you look at full calendar, you, have, you see the same concept. Source is basically defining all the styles, all the scripts, and the bundle file. So now where do we find all these bundle files? We can actually look into our destination, uh, our destination assets folder. And let's look at full calendar. Let's try to locate full calendar's bundle. So if you look at our destination, so plugins, and then go to custom and full calendar, and you see them right here. Again, there's an RTL because we set RTL to true. Yes, bundle is also here. So if you want to have to create your own uh, or add your own um, plugin that is not going to be compiled and bundled up within the global plugins, we can just add a new one right here. So let, for example, say we can just add. Like, let's just put it here for example. Let's put something like custom plugin. Then put a comma here. And then what you do is you define your sources and you define your bundle.
and then you basically put in all the necessary sources from your source and the necessary uh, look bundle locations that it's going to be deployed to. And that's pretty much it of how the GUP config works. So now the, each demo, as mentioned, has its own GUP config. So if you're say configuring this, like for example, I am actually configuring GUP config or demo one. Yep, demo one. Let's minimize this, which is this file here. So this file is I'm com I'm doing this configuration for demo one. But let's say I want to have uh say a different layout for a different um section of my project, right? And I would like demo three to be that layout. And what I can do is I can actually go into um demo trees, uh demo trees um tools and go into its own gup config and then do the same exact customization here and each gup config will differ from one demo to another into uh, from one demo to another is completely independent from one another and therefore easily maintained organized and deployed all right so let's have a back look at our documentation again we went through um what uh what uh, where the gup config is located for each demo and also what each field um, does uh, if you need more reading or more understanding you can read our official documentation it's basically all listed here like what it does and the best of all is when you run gup build we have certain shortcuts so gup build is what um, is the default way of building the demo or building your assets but you can actually set different shortcuts. Like if you type gulp build with two dashes and an RTL equals false, what this does is if you look into our demo, our, our config here, what this does is it's just a shortcut to disable this um, option. So running this essentially is the same as running gulp build with this configuration set to false. So if you want to just generate JS files, you can just write um, called build dash dash JS. You just generate JS files. If you just need um, CSS, and then you just write called build dash dash sas, and it will just deploy um, CSS files. Same goes if, if you just want media files. And lastly, we have this called dash dash production, which basically just minifies all the JS and CSS. You can go ahead and try this uh, command. So let's look at our demo one and let's open this up and put it here and open our terminal. Go to our demo one here and type in up oh, such prod. Okay, it's done, and as you can see, our files are now minified, which will be perfect if you are going to deploy your projects to a production server. Of course, you can also do that without a shortcut by actually scrolling up, changing this to true. Take this and this to true, and then you basically get the same results. So like next thing we can we can talk about is the gup watch command. Gup watch command is basically a, when you turn it on, every time you save uh, your SAS or JS files within the within your project, it will then uh, re-render or rather recompile and redeploy the assets to its de destination. You can also watch um, just just watch JS if you want, or just watch on SAS files. Also, if you also want, if you do want a localhost environment, you can just go ahead and type "gup localhost" and you'll get your localhost environment. Um, of course, if you do have your own um, localhost uh, settings or localhost software such as XAMPP or WAM, then again, it does the same thing. Okay, so 
um, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found this video uh, informative. Uh, if you did, please give us a like. It will really help us out. Also, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that every time when we release a new video, you get an update. Uh, follow us on our social media stuff or portals. Um, links will be in the description below. And yep, I see you in the next video. Take care.